University doing as far as sheep research is concerned? Well, we've, we've um, got the Lincoln Sheep Program uh, established now. Last year was the establishment year. We're pretty much up and running. There's still a few loose ends that have got to be tied together. Uh, but we've got two or three trials um, planned for this year. Uh, the main one is probably a parasite management comparison on our summer safe unit. Uh, we've also got a repeat of the double lambing um, pilot trial that we did last year uh, and we'll be doing some um, work with uh, um, urea use and um, parasite management on finishing uh, units as well. So those are the three main um, uh, trials that are there. The main focus is the main well the main focus still remains the resilience and and uh, consistency of production productivity and resilience on sheep farms so that's the main focus. Can you expand on the the parasite trials? Okay um, the parasite trial base is based on uh, the notion that the main source of um, larval uh, infection in pastures is the breakdown in immunity uh, in the periparturian ewe, which is the ewe around lambing. Um, she loses her immunity to the parasites because of the high demands for energy and protein for lactation, uh, gestation and lactation. Um, and because she loses that uh, immunity, you get a massive increase in the, in the viable eggs shed through the faeces. That contaminates the pasture and that um, is the source of infection for lambs. So we figure that if you can replace or uh, increase the, particularly the protein uh, availability to the U, you might be able to um, overcome that loss of immunity. Um, and if we can do that, then the U remains immune to the, to the worms. They don't shed viable eggs. Uh, we get rid of that massive increase in, in um, contamination of the pasture. The lambs will then not get uh, infected to the same extent and hopefully that means we use far less drench which of course uh, means much slower build up of drench resistance in the worms and that's the real, that's the long term real benefit of this is that it slows down drench resistance. The, uh, the mating old cold use for a second time in a season? Yeah, um, we tried this last year, a uh, bit of a pilot trial, two dose rates for uh, gonadotrophin to uh, bring the ewes into season in uh, October, November, before they wean their, their uh, August lambs. Um, the low dose treatment didn't do an awful lot. Uh, the high dose treatment, we got 55% uh, lambing from um, mating in November, uh, lambing in March. Um, remembering that these are the cull ewes, so anything that isn't marked by the ram can be culled immediately, that it's weaned from the first set of lambs. So you're only carrying maybe 9-10% uh, of your ewes through the summer um, to, to autumn, so obviously it's not a, a summer dry option, it's a summer safe option. Um, and that 55% lambing translates into around about 10% uh, extra lambs um, each year and they're lambs that you're uh, the born in autumn and available for sale very early in spring when the prices hopefully are quite high but I'm not going to get into the business of predicting prices so but generally speaking prices premiums exist early in the season so we've still got to work some more make sure that we've got the numbers right but we see some potential for that. And the work that you're doing with nitrates? Um, this is also associated with uh, uh, parasites. There is some evidence that um, urea, for example, if you soak parasite larvae in urea, they don't like it. They basically die. So we want to check to see whether a, a, um, a um, dressing of urea, liquid urea, uh, after um, weaning, will get rid of whatever parasites are around in the pastures at that time. So it's, it, it's a bit of an exploratory trial just to see if that's another uh, option we've got in terms of parasite management. Tony, everybody's predicting another long, hot, dry summer like last year. Yeah, here we go again. Um, well, 
I'm not into predicting either weather or prices, <laughs> Rob, but, but if we do, I mean, I, the story that we've been um, basically talking about in the last year is, is um, flexibility in order to have resilience in, in these kinds of circumstances. And our um, basic notion is that you stock to better than average conditions, so a high stocking rate, but you do it with flexible stock so that you can retreat from that if and when it gets dry, okay? And you need to know that it's getting dry. That might sound silly, but, but um, people need to react quickly, not well after it's all dried up, okay? So you've got to be tracking soil moisture, for example, uh, to see where you are. Now, I understand a lot of farmers are in a, a, a more difficult position right at the moment than they were maybe this time last year because we had a very dry uh, summer last year as well. So whether farmers can really uh, put into place what we're, we're talking about now is, is an open question. Two years in a row, if we do get a really dry summer, is an extraordinary uh, kind of situation. It, it's not your one in 10, it's your sort of one in 25 kind of event. And um, you really need contingencies for that. So um, depending on where you are in terms of stocking rate, I think uh, it's a pretty slow spring at the moment. I mean, we've, it's been cold, it's very wet. We're not getting the grass growth, but, but if we do get some growth, then I think, you know, making sure that you've got a stock of, of feed uh, in case we get into trouble, uh, try and retain as much flexibility as you can in terms of the stock that you've got so that if it does get dry, you can uh, unload. The problem is if it doesn't and you've very low stocking rate, the pasture will turn to very low quality and you won't get the performance anyway. So that's the, the trade-off that you've got to make. Difficult circumstance, I would stock as high as I feel comfortable to do it, uh, make sure I've got as much flexibility as I can and I'd make sure the barn's full. Mm -hmm.